Hi, I'm Jalen Rose, and welcome to the Renaissance Man podcast, proudly presented by the New York Post, a show where we cover trends in fashion, entertainment, current events, and everything in between. My next guest is a talented actor, sex symbol, heartthrob, <laughs> and among the many roles he's played in Save the Last Dance, Barbershop. Now he's shining in teal, but you can also check him in Hulu's latest legal drama, Reasonable Doubt, working, aside, working alongside Michael Ely and Scandal Queen, Carrie Washington. Be sure to check that out. It is my honor to welcome the incredibly talented Sean Patrick Thomas to the Renaissance Man. Thank you for joining hey, me, man. brother. Thanks for having me, man. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely, appreciate the love. So you were in DC. You were born in DC. I was born in DC, but you grew up in Delaware. What was your yes. childhood like? Ah, my childhood. Um, it was weird because my parents were uh, immigrants from Guyana, and mm. so uh, we moved into Delaware, and uh, we just lived in this all white neighborhood, and and we were just around like really just a, around a lot of white folks for most of my life. Um. And so that was kind of jarring because uh, my family, on top of being black, we were an immigrant family. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of it, it was just like, it was just us kind of isolated, you know? And so um, it was, it was a, a great childhood though. Like Delaware is a, great, a wonderful place to raise a child, but you do kind of feel like, okay, like I don't feel connected to this mm -hmm. community that I'm in either. Like I feel different. I feel like I'm a little, I'm not, I'm not one of y'all, you right. know? And so you, you, you grow up with that and, you know, that kind of shapes who you are. So when did you know that you wanted to be an actor? When did I know? Probably when I was in undergrad, like when I went to University of Virginia, um, late 80s, early 90s. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was about to graduate, I still wasn't sure what I was going to do. And I had a great teacher there named Richard, Richard Warner, who encouraged me. Uh, to pursue acting, and he encouraged me to audition for NYU a grad acting program, mm -hmm. and I got in. And once I got into NYU grad acting, I thought, oh, okay, I might actually be able to do this, mm -hmm. you know. And so, and that's when I it really started to hold for me that okay, I got into this good acting school, and it's in New York, and I'm gonna do this for real, and and let's see what happens. So it was kind of like somewhere in there, like my end of my college years. So what were some of the struggles you found when you first started pursuing acting as a career? What mm. were the obstacles that you eventually had to overcome? Right. Well, I think uh, a couple of different things. First, uh, I was trained as a stage actor, you know, to do, uh, you know, act on stage. And so I didn't think as much about like image and popularity and, you know, of the business part of things, you know? And so I was very naive and I still, to, to an extent, I still think I am a little bit naive about like the business part of things. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of kept me from uh, being as savvy and as networky and stuff like that as, as I could have been or, or should have been uh, when I first started out. Um, and also when I first came out and I still think it's sort of the case, um, the roles for black men in particular were very stereotypical in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You were either comic relief or you were had to be uh, menacing or threatening in some way. Mm -hmm. And there was really nothing in between. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I'm neither one of those things. That's not really my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. either one of those things, you know, like, yeah. I don't like, I, I came into like this, I came into things feeling like you're not, I'm, I'm no joke. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to make you laugh. That's mm -hmm. not my thing. Right. You know? And it, if I felt like that was expected of me, I, I, I resented it, mm. you know? And so I felt like there was just a narrow range of, of what black men were allowed to do on screen. And so that, that was something that was difficult to deal with early on for sure. Which role it could be on screen, it could be on stage. Did you realize I could be something special in this field? Uh-huh. Probably the first thing that made me feel that way was when I did a production of Raisin in the Sun when I was an undergrad at the University of Virginia. Uh, that same uh, teacher, Richard Warner, uh, he cast me in that role. And I got up there and I thought, I can do this. 
<laughs> this is all right. This is all right. I don't know if I'm going to do this for a living. I don't, I don't know. But right now, right here tonight, I'm good at this. I can mm. do this. And so I got hooked right there, you know, when I, when I was in college, just the sense of like, this feels easy to me. I know it's supposed to be hard, but it feels easy to me, mm -hmm. which is kind of like a magical feeling. Like, I'm sure you have felt that way yes. with, 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 with basketball and with broadcasting. Yes. Wasn't there a point where like mm -hmm. you got onto the court or you got in the, in the mm -hmm. studio and you thought, wow, like Definitely. this is supposed to be hard, but like I'm, I'm flying here. Mm -hmm. You know, what, it's, what, it's that feeling. What, what advice, because as you mentioned, people that look like us in particular have been conditioned based on our climate in America to believe our way out is through entertainment, mm -hmm. is through sports. But can you, can you acknowledge the time, the energy, the passion that it takes for you to get in a role? See, sometimes, oh. like you said, you make it look easy. So now everybody feels like I could do that. No problem. Right. What do I need to do? So right. talk to me about the process of you getting into a role. That's a great question, man, because people come up to me all the time, younger actors, and they're like, okay, man, like, how do I get started in this, in this profession? Like, what do I do? And whenever I talk about training, mm -hmm. acting classes, voice, speech, movement, breath, uh, dance, Whenever I talk about those things, people get real like, oh, gosh, I don't, I don't want to hear all that shit. Sounds like you know work. What I mean? mm -hmm. Right. It sounds like work, <laughs> you know, but that's what it that's what it takes. You know, like everything that I have done in my career it, it is grounded mm -hmm. in, 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 in my training, really, uh, just having confidence that I can handle any type of material confidence that if you hand me uh, a song to get through, like I'm not a singer, but I can get through a song. Mm -hmm. If you hand me some choreography, I'm no dancer at all, mm -hmm. but I can get through this choreography. You know what I mean? The, mm -hmm. Just the, the confidence and the grounding that comes with training um, was everything for me. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of years. Um, you know, obviously there's some people that are just like, you know, like roll up out of bed and they're just geniuses at it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's great. But for most of us, mm -hmm. it's hard work every day single day i just did an interview earlier today and i was talking about how hard to me our greatest living actor how hard he works and that's denzel washington mm -hmm. i've seen it up close oh, gee. i've never seen anybody work harder than him and so when you talk about um uh, what it takes to be in this game and what it takes to, to work as an actor there's no shortcuts you know and and the greatest living actor that we have out there right now denzel washington takes no shortcuts he works harder than anybody else i've ever seen and that's what I was going to ask you next. Some of the people, whether as a fan or somebody who's extremely successful in the industry, what are some of the television shows or movies that inspired you? Wow. Um, television shows and movies that inspired me. I've always been a big James Bond nut. <laughs> always. Classics. Always. Yes. Just that, just that whole world, that whole vibe. It's always been my thing. Uh, but beyond that, my spirit animal is Sidney Poitier's character in, in The Heat of the Night. Mm. Because he reminded me of myself when he went down into that all white town and had to deal with all of that shit mm. and, and all the expectations and, and, and all the, 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 the lack of respect that he got just because he was black. Like he was a detective. He came down there to do a job and everybody tried to treat him like he was less than because he was black, even though he was more polished and intelligent and professional than any of them. And no, exactly. Than any of them. And the scene where he's in that sunroom and that redneck slaps him across the face and said, he slaps him back. That is... That's like I said, that's my spirit animal. That scene right there is, is everything about who and what I am and, and try to be. And so that, you know, in the heat of the night, for sure. So also when, and by the way, you're an industry veteran, you're, uh, so you've always handled yourself with class and professionalism. 
and I talk to you about some of the roles that you've chosen to take and how you go about that process. But I want to, I want, I want to go back to that. So you're receiving scripts all of the time. <laughs> you're receiving options to do roles all of the time. How do you pick and choose the right role versus trying to get the bag? Right. That's a tough, that's a tough deal, man. Sometimes you do you just got to get the bag period. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, you have obligations, you have things come up, you know, you have a family mm -hmm. and it's about that bag, yep. Straight up, you mm -hmm. know? So you just have to do that without losing your soul as best, as best you can. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, and I, I think that I've managed to pull that off so far, you know, we'll, we'll see, but, uh, mm -hmm. so far, I think I've managed to do that. I haven't done anything that I feel uh, betrays uh, my sense of, of good work. I haven't done anything that I think betrays black people. That's very important to me. And so, so far, so good with that. But yeah, you know, it, it's always a balancing act. Also, respectfully, you've gotten a chance to not only act with some of the greatest actresses in the history of the industry, but I have to ask you something fun about okay. sex scenes. What is, what is that like? Like you, like when I'm watching a movie, right? It's like, oh man, that'd be awesome. But you uh -huh. are not understanding. There's 50 people in the room. Yeah. There's cameras. Like, yeah. talk to me about the process of getting mentally ready for a sex scene. Man, to me, it's it's like an out, an out of body experience. Like, I'm here. I'm doing this thing, but it's not really me. If that makes any sense, of course. you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and now, uh, there's intimacy coordinators on set. Mm. So, so I I've done that. stuff where they're like, okay, on this line, your hand is going to go here. Mm -hmm. And then on this line, your hand is going to go there. Mm -hmm. And then on this line, you're going to do touch this or touch that or whatever it is, you know? Mm -hmm. And so now it's, I mean, it's always been kind of, uh, mechanical and kind of, uh, you know, just kind of paint by numbers. Mm -hmm. But now it's even more so that because there's an intimate intimacy coordinator right there to make sure that everybody feels respected and everybody, nobody feels violated or anything like that. They're there with like, you know, breath mints and, all kinds, <laughs> you know, like, it, yeah, it's, it's the whole game. I never you know? thought about that. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. In, in, be, in between scenes, they're like, okay, they, they, they got the spray or they got the mint or whatever, or whatever it is. And so that nobody feels like, they're, you know, victimized in any way, even by bad breath. Mm -hmm. I, I love that so very <laughs> much. But have you noticed that you've done so very well as an actor that when you're out and about, and even though you're a happily married man, that guys grab their woman a little bit tighter when you're around? <laughs> I haven't had that really. You know, you, know what, you know what I've had more than anything else is dudes coming up to me and be like, hey, dog, my wife loves you, man. Will you mm -hmm. take a picture with me? Will you tell her happy birthday, you know, on, on FaceTime? So I get much more of that, to be honest with you. I mean, brothers generally aren't as uh, territorial as, as you would think. They're mm -hmm. really not. Like, like they're cool. And, 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 and what I also get a lot of is a lot of uh, uh, brothers who say, yeah, you know, or, or, or white women who would say, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I saw Save the Last Dance and I felt like I was free to have an interracial relationship. And, and now, look, we, I have like four mixed kids and this is because mm -hmm. of you know, save the last dance. And, and you know, so I get a lot of that. Not a whole lot of dudes trying to like post up and, <laughs> and, and, you know, trying to, you know, make me some type of threat. They don't, I'm not treated like that, which is cool. And you don't deserve that, but also huge Eagles fan. Now yes. you would appreciate the fact that I just had Darius Slay on Darius the show Slay. recently. My guy, Brandon Graham, Detroit native. Y'all have a Jalen under center. Like I love the Eagles too. The only undefeated team currently in the NFL. Talk to me about your Eagles and a house divided since mm -hmm. your wife loves the Saints. Uh-huh. Okay, I, I missed the last couple of things you said. Okay, it up there, so, so talk to me about a house divided because yes. you're a diehard Eagles fan. I am. And your wife loves the Saints. It is a house divided, man, because they're loud. Those New Orleans <laughs> people are loud. Like, all that, who that, who that, who that? Like, they, they don't stop. So um yeah it's it's no joke but I mean I'm cool with her liking her own team that's fine I mean you're from New Orleans mm -hmm. I respect no that doubt. but do not put 
a New Orleans Saints jersey on my son Ooh. or on my daughter. Like to me, that's Ooh. that's where she crossed the line, man. She crossed the line. I <laughs> I was working a job, and 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 before I left home, I had gotten my I had just gotten my son an Eagles jersey, and, and he was little, and I had this little e- Eagles jersey on, and I went to do this job. I came home a couple months later, and he was wearing a Saints jersey. And that was just oh. the height of disrespect. <laughs> and I haven't forgiven her for that <laughs> since then. Horrible. <laughs> Don't make my babies rock that. that at that, least uh, both of them. At least both of you guys' squads have recently won Super Bowls. Yeah, so Eagles more recently than, than them. I'm account. just saying Eagles more recently than them. And we're looking Absolutely. way better now than the Saints. No I mean, Only I'm, undefeated I'm just, team in the game. We're undefeated. And we're playing well. It's not like a lucky undefeated where like we got a lucky bounce of the ball here or there. We're legit mm-hmm. solid. And the Saints, uh, not not so much. I mean, I'm just calling what it like I see. What happened was, you know? yeah, they yeah, they need they need help. Yeah. So I have to ask you this. So you and Kerry watched this scare, shared the screen for the first time when you guys played siblings in the classic Save the Last Dance. Now yeah. you're reunited in the new Hulu series reasonable doubt with Carrie as the executive producer. What yeah. was it like working with her then and now? It, it's always been a pleasure. I remember when I first met Carrie, I think uh, we were getting into the same van, I think, to go from like the hotel to, to set or something like that. I think that's what it was. And right off the bat, we instantly connected as brother and sister, really. You know, like mm. we automatically just took on that energy with each other. And it was real in person and it was real on screen. And, and we always felt that way about each other and it was always genuine. And so, uh, so now 20 years later, it's exactly the same. You know, I walk on set and it's, it's just a warm feeling of family, uh, even now when, when I get on set with her. And, and to be directed by her was just a thrill because like she's such a, a, a pro. She knows exactly what she wants. She has so much command and, and so much uh, just confidence and vision in what she wants. And, um, and I just love being the person on the receiving end of all that, having known her all this time. And it was a very special feeling uh, to be working with her again. Absolutely. That's awesome. And another recent project you played a role in, I saw the premiere in New York City with Whoopi Goldberg and many mm. of the cast. Teal. Incredible, yes. incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell me about the importance of working on films and shows that keep our Black history from being erased. Oh, man. Thank you so much for asking about that, because that's what's going on right now. There's places in this country where they're trying to make us forget that Emmett Till ever happened, you know? Mm. And, and and the point of, of, of talking about it now is that what happened to Emmett Till is still happening today. Black men are getting killed because they are black and for no other reason. If you look at Ahmaud Arbery, if you look at Trayvon Martin, it's the same thing. It, it's all part of the same pattern. And I want everybody to see Till and understand that this is, not, this is in 1955 and the images might be black and white and whatever, but in this movie Till, it's in full technicolor. And it makes it seem immediate. It makes it seem real. And, and, and it brings home the fact that this is still happening right now. This is not just some historical footnote uh, that, that Black men are still have, have a target on their back, in, in my opinion. Absolutely. What is, and again, I want to make sure I stress, exquisite movie, very well done very necessary for that story to be told and to just to hear everyone talk about how many decades they've been trying to tell that story crazy and couldn't find the funding so what was it like for you when you finally got the call that i got the role i mean it was some jobs are just a job some jobs are just like okay i'm not busy right now i need to get to work Mm -hmm. you know but this was more so like okay i get to be a part of a calling. I get to be a part of a mission. I get to be a part of literally changing the game for black people. And that's a whole other feeling. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so the feeling I got when I got the call was just a deep sense of uh, 
humility, purpose. I was honored. Um, I'm not a lot of people know about the character I played. He was Gene Mobley, mm-hmm. who was uh, Emmett Till's kind of like surrogate father and and Mamie Till's uh, fiance at the time of Emmett's death. Mm-hmm. Not many people know about him and the role that he played. And so I felt a great sense of responsibility to to him and to his family mm. uh, to, to to do him justice and 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 just let people know the role that he played in all of this and and how much he was there to support Mamie Till Mobley and 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 her bravery and uh, and her her heroism. Well, make sure you stay in contact with your tailor or your stylist <laughs> or kick it with your wife because you're gonna be needing some suits, my brother. You're gonna be getting some awards for that show. Oh man. <laughs> For real, we'll see, man. like we'll you guys see. crushed it. And Thank I appreciate you. you taking the time, but before I let you get out of here, I got a rapid fire segment called Gone in 60 Seconds. You ready to do this? Let's do it, man. All right, Save the Last Dance revolved around ball, ballet and hip hop. What other type dance style would you be open to do in a movie today? I would love to do that Fred, Ast- Fred Astaire type stuff. Ooh. You know, like all that stepping out with my baby all yes. that all that type of stuff yeah like with the cane and all and, the, and all, all that that's that, that's yeah, a vibe that i like that. Yeah. nice suit, clean yes you know yes. I'm, I'm into Few that buttons undone yeah. all of that no yeah. question as i mentioned you're a diehard eagles fan married to a saints fan what ends up being the team that your kids root for well my son is with the Eagles now. My daughter <laughs> is with the Saints. So, so, the, so the battle continues, man. We're, 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 still, we're, still, we're still neck and neck. Name one actor you haven't worked with that you would love to in the future. An actor I have not worked with who I would love to work with in the future is Viola Davis. Mm, we Absolutely. To Looking we forward to, to it. see that. The legend, the queen. Yes. And lastly, but certainly not least, I'm a diehard Jay-Z fan, just like you. And one of the coldest things about the episodes of Reasonable Doubt that people may or may not know, that they're all named after Jay-Z songs. So I have to ask you, and it may be more than one, obviously, Uh which whole songs are at the top of your favorites list? Man, that's a good one. I mean, the story of OJ. Mm. I mean, that's in the last episode that just came on. Yeah, you know that one. Um, the New York, mm. New York with Alicia Keys. Yes. I love that. Yes. Uh, gosh, man. Um, and I'm trying to remember the the title. I mean, it, the song is in my head. I can't remember the title of it. Uh, gosh, it's it's uh, it's escaping me right now. But there's just so many to choose from, you know. But but right off the bat, I would say the story of OJ. Well, continued success, Sean Patrick Thomas. It was a joy to be on the set with you when I was fortunate enough to be in Barbershop. Yeah. You're killing the game, my brother. Looking forward to seeing you not only doing more great projects, but the awards you're going to win because you're great at what you do. Thanks for the love. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.